and I noticed that the water is still running. So I got up and as I went towards the bathroom and I turned to go in, you see the knob turning, twisting, turning off. This is Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. Today's guest is Travis, a New Orleans local that worked in one of the most haunted hotels in the city, the Bourbon Orleans. Welcome, Travis, from New Orleans. Uh, you. So you reached out to me because you work at the Bourbon Orleans Hotel, which is known for being one of New Orleans' haunted hotels. Correct. And you've experienced some of the hauntings that take place at the hotel. And you've even captured a picture of a ghostly looking woman in one of the hallways. Yes. So you mentioned that you experienced hauntings at the hotel. Can you tell me what kind of activity you've noticed? The activities that I've noticed is um, the TV being turned off and on in most of the, um, the suites. Um, the suites is upstairs, downstairs, and my well, my position was I was um, a houseman, which we go from helping stripping the beds and going throughout the hotel through every room, and I would be watching um, every Sunday, you know, checkout day. I'll be watching football, Saints games, and we're moving from upstairs to downstairs, and you know, someone the TV. I just be shutting off by itself, turning off by itself in each room, no matter what room you went to. So it kind of like follow you to each room and just. Yes, correct. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> yes, and that's the little um, I for, um, the little girls, the little girl who roams the hallways in each room. For me, um, little children ghosts for some reason are the scariest. So just the fact that it's a little girl <laughs> that turns off the TVs. Is a little bit creepy. But have you ever seen her or do you just notice that the TV's shut off? Um, I haven't I haven't seen her. I seen the one that um that I sent you, which was the nun. Oh, that's the nun. Yes. So I was looking into the hotel's history and there seems to be like several mm -hmm. resident ghosts. So I thought maybe she was like there's a Confederate soldier. Yes. There's ghosts in the ballroom. But I thought maybe she was one of the ballroom ghosts, but. That's what I thought, you know, that's, you know, after they, they came, you had people come in and try, you know, like to um, debunk, debunk it. But that's what I um, found out. I found out that they were like, oh, it's the, it's the, it's the nun. Then it was the, but after that, you know, I had someone, someone came in and they told me that it was someone, it was her, the lady from the ballroom because someone else had seen her in the ballroom dancing. Oh, the same lady? Yes. So she she it was a nun, but she still hangs mm -hmm. out in the ballroom as well. Correct. Correct. Well, I'm glad that at least she's like having fun in the afterlife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it looks like the school or sorry, the hotel was used as a convent, a girls' school, a medical ward and an orphanage. Correct. So I assume that all of the ghosts that reside at the hotel are from these time periods. Correct. Uh huh. And mostly, um, found out it was most um the spirits are from that area of the sisters of the Holy Family, and that's um what they say. It's mostly from like the you know from like what eighteen thirteen eighteen sixty two back and you know in that time. So from that time, they still linger around there. Oh, that's interesting. I need to look more into the convent history. And you know, it was most like when the um, you know, the theater. You know, it was a theater, um, a theater at first, and then that's when they came up, um, came along. The sisters of the Holy F Family, you know, like and acquired it before they sold it off to um, the Bourbon, the Bourbon Kings operation hotel during the con like was there a lot of disease because i know that there was a lot of yellow fever in new orleans, new orleans like in the early days yes that was doing that that was doing yes that was during that time from the orphanage when it was an orphanage uh-huh okay yellow fever. yes uh, so you know that picture that you sent me of the nun when i first saw it it was really big so i saw the two like black pillars and i was like Ooh, yeah there they are <laughs> right that's 
that's actually was two um um employees um that was doing construction down there. And that was two employees. That's why I looked like that. Because yeah, they're standing kind of like straight. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Once you once you pointed out that she was on the left in the white dress, I can't unsee her, and it's so obviously a woman. It's just, it's such a good picture. Did you capture that like on security cameras or the day before? The day before um, I was at work, I experienced, um, I seen her and had that exact location. It was some construction workers that took that picture and it was doing it before and after because not, that's old. They was tearing up the carpet. And so they was doing before and after pictures. So, and, you know, doing construction, you know, when something is going on, spirits don't like anything to be messed with. You know, that's when they really manifest themselves. And I told you know, and I told them that. And that was kept that was on the fourth floor at the, the presidential suite. And that's where they start first construction on the fourth floor. So did they notice as they were doing any if they were doing any more construction around the building, if they had noticed any more apparitions coming forward, or was it just that one time? No, it was just that one time. And actually the um that worker, he had to um they had to take him off the um site off the work site oh wow yeah because he was terrified oh no <laughs> yeah he quit he's gonna quit oh no yeah. <laughs> can you imagine your next job interview so why did you quit your last job a ghost <laughs> why a ghost uh -huh. oh wow that's kind of cool though yeah, well because i like ghost stories and stuff but i know me too <laughs> so how long have you been working at the hotel um, I was at the um, Bourbon Orleans for five years. Okay, and you're not working there anymore? No. So before you started working there, did you believe in ghosts? Yes. Yes, I was all into it. I used to watch um, um, Ghost Hunters with the, the guy from um, when they used to go all over the place. Um, you probably seen it come on TV. It was coming on TV. I have. I've seen many. I can't place the people. The plumber, the plumber guy. They were plumbers by day and ghost hunters at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and another guy from, um, I think England. He would go. Oh, I know he had an accent, England accent. He would go all over and for um store, you know, ghost stores and everything. So I was all. And I used to watch a lot of unsolved mysteries and anything that was graphic. You know, like ghostly i was into it so i knew what to look for when they manifest themselves when don't you know those things so hair standing up you know up on my own yeah so yeah but i definitely believed in them do you have any ghostly experiences before working at the because new orleans is quite a haunted place so did you have any experiences before you started working at the hotel i have not one thing where you mentioned that your hair stands up, I've heard recently that when a ghost is nearby, apparently it feels like you have spider webs all over your body or like, yes. Did you feel that ever? That, that's it. Yes. Oh, crazy. <laughs> I've never felt that, mm -hmm. but now I'm going to pay attention for that. Yes. That's what I felt when um she passed me up. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I, yeah, I've definitely felt spider webs, but then I just noticed it's my hair on me because I have quite long hair, but in the future, I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Pay attention to that. Also, when you, um, you know, when you take in, in, like, when you video recording and you see this, like, little dust particle flying across, mm -hmm. like, the, the lens or something, that's another sign. Oh, okay. Does it... I've heard that it needs to, like, be, like, a specific... Like, people will see if it's an orb or if it's dust or if it's a bug. But there's, like, a specific way to, like, tell which is which. But I've never mastered that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just... It's just going to be that one. Because you can tell uh, the little dust particles. You can debunk that. You know, it's not nothing. If you just, just see that one little... You have other um, things happening also. Hair standing up also. Yeah. At the, at, you know, at the same time. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know... The, no, you notice the temperature in the room. Yeah, usually it goes down. It gets, cool. it gets cold, yeah. I'm from Canada, so I like the cold. So I'd be like, all right. Because last time I was in New Orleans, um, it was really hot. Not for you because it was 
April, May. But for me, I was so hot. Yeah, I'm used to it. And anytime I'd go back to the hotel, I would turn the air conditioning on to like 50. And the poor people that were cleaning the rooms, um, they would always turn it back up to 70 because it was way too it's cold. Too cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I've heard rumors that room 644 is the most haunted. Have you experienced any activity in this room, I guess, besides the TVs? Or do you think that ghost hunters are like hyping it up? No, not at all. That's the room I stayed in. I stayed in that um, room one um, December. I won, I won, um, I made a, a two night stay at the Bourbon Orleans for Christmas party, annual Christmas party. And I decided, hey, I'll stay the weekend and I'll go to work, you know, that Monday. I just have to go downstairs, you know. I did, you know, I did that, you know. I woke up ready to go to work, you know, took a shower, um, got out the shower, dried off. Um, I started brushing my teeth, you know. I finished, but I left the water running. So as I go into the room and watch TV and watching the news and, you know, putting on my socks, getting dressed. And I noticed that the water is still running. So I got up and as I went towards the bathroom and I turned to go in, you see the knob turning, twisting, turning off. Oh, that's scary. So it just completely turned yes. off right in front of you? Yes, yeah, not like completely turn off they shut it off they twist the handle back like wow. turned it off was that the weirdest experience you had while working or staying at the hotel um yes and no because of seeing her in the white dress um i was making up a rollaway bed and i thought someone was trying to pass pass me i was on my knee and i, and I looked to the side and all i saw was the the bite the, the bottom um, of the dress. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And just disappeared. I'm like, what? You know, just gone. And that's when, <laughs> and that's when, um, so I was off the next day. And that's when I went, I went back to work the next day and they called me down to the front desk. They showed me the picture. They're like, this the woman that you seen? Cause I told them. And that's the next day. That's when they caught that picture. So what did you think? Like, what was the thoughts that were going through your head when they showed you the picture and you're like, this is the woman? Which, by the way, is it okay if I post that picture on the YouTube version of the podcast? Yeah, no problem. Okay. I was just, like, shocked. Like, that's who I saw. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, so before you experienced that, did you know that the hotel was haunted? And Yes, I did. I did because... We had um on this we had on this on the sixth floor that um we had a new housekeeper that started and you know they would tell us not to you know tell the new employees anything or try to scare them or anything and um so I forgot the um, the the lady who was training her the new housekeeper I forgot her name but I knew the the housekeeper her name was Tosha and she said that and she asked us like how are you liking your first day. And she told she was like, it's it's going good. It's you know, she's like, it's going good. But I feel like somebody keep calling my name every time I come out to you know to look. I'm like nobody's there. I just walked off I'm like ah, you tell you tell her. So I'm like, that's that little girl. And she's like, what little girl? I'm like, well they told us not to tell you that the you know hotel is haunted and you know things of that nature. You are like, yes. So the little girl calling her name but did he stay did he continue working there she did continue working there she did i wonder if he still she works still there <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she still works there i don't think she still works there do you have a favorite ghost story or history story about just new orleans in general no not really because being in new orleans you don't ex you know like you don't experience those things like most people from New Orleans may tell you. Like, no, we have never experienced anything or, or been, you know, ghostly or voodoo or anything like that. But that was my like first experience working there. Yeah, that's cool. I've never worked at like a, a haunted place before, so. <laughs> but you know, you had, 
And I'm not the only, um, you know, after that, we had other housemen who I worked with who said they experienced things also. Even guys who was there 18 years. Oh, wow. I know you said that you were working, um, like you weren't working at the front desk or anything, but did you notice that like tourists would come in and talk about the ghosts or act, ask about the hauntings at the hotel? Um, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, a lot of people. It's very common. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot. so many haunted hotels and just buildings in, well, in the French Quarter specifically. Yes, the Hotel Montelion. Which floor? It's a um rum. Um, I forgot which rum it is. They actually shot a movie down here, um, based off that, I believe. Really? I'm gonna have to look this yes. up. Yes. Um, I want to watch it. Yeah, Hotel Montelion. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. Um, yes, I seen it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, cause they, yeah, they'll tell you now that one is a you know, it's like the top. I believe it's still like the one. Yeah, it's the top ten. The top ten in New Orleans. Top five, actually. That's cool. So you mentioned mm -hmm. that you met Nicholas Cage and you told him about your haunting experiences. How did he react to that? Oh wow, he was ecstatic. He was like, "Are you serious?" Because he haven't um, told me that he he you know he used to prior to that he used to always come there and he would never you know like experience anything or get anything. So until my situation, I told him my experience. And I told him basically what rooms it was, 644 being like the most, 644, um, then 214, 346. It's, a, it's, and he actually brought like, um, maybe, I think he, like seven rooms. I think it stayed over like a week, a week or two, trying to experience them. So he was like, Saying I, I tried, I want to try to you know, like reach out to him, see if he ever, you know, like um experience anything um after, but haven't you know, haven't had um any time to get him, you know. So he was ecstatic, he was um like excited when I told him everything. But once he saw that picture, he really, you know, so he really wasn't having a lot of um pit, you know, no photos or anything until that photo. Oh, that's so cool. So he basically spent a week just like hopping to each room to like sort of have an experience. Oh, right. that's cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard. So I don't know how true this is because obviously I don't know Nicolas Cage, but I heard that the reason he bought or the reason he's something with the Lollary Mansion where he bought it, but then he couldn't stay there after a night because he was experiencing stuff. But you would think if he likes it, he would have stayed there because. You're right. Yeah, so I don't know how true that story is, but I think he just wasn't um experience, you know, experiencing it, you know, like anything. He didn't have any experiences, but you know, you had um other people, you know, who was ex experiencing things and just walking by, um, you know, like just seeing apparitions, uh, you know, when they were walking by the the mansion, the Lollary Mansion. Correct. Correct. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of stuff about yeah. that mansion, and then um I don't know if you've watched that show. American Horror Story. You know, I I, I, don't, I I need to watch it. I never got a chance to watch it. Okay, well, season three is about witches, and they have like a coven in. Well, it. I don't know if the TV show takes place in New Orleans, but it's filmed. A lot of it is filmed in New Orleans, and okay. two of the characters are like real figures from New Orleans history, which is Madame Lalaurie and mm, then okay. uh, Marie Laveau. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see. Like, I don't know how much like they pulled from like their actual history, but mm -hmm. it's cool to see them like real historical figures right, in like right. a TV show, a horror TV show. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to see that. I definitely got. Yeah, that. yeah, you definitely need to check it out. I think it's season three, but season one, two, and three are pretty good. But then I sort of tapered off watching because okay. it was like they were just being violent for violence' sake, and that's just not my thing. Uh -huh, right. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> right, don't do that. So, um, so can I ask where you found my blog? Were you just searching mm -hmm. for like Nicholas Cage New Orleans po related posts? Yes, I I saw um I saw something. I saw some uh, pop Nicholas Cage, and I saw when I saw, okay, then I said okay Nicholas Cage New Orleans because I mean I told you I never got a chance to you know like get in contact with him again. So I say Nicholas Cage New Orleans, 
And then that's when I seen your, when I was able to comment on your story. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. this is awesome. I said, let me reach out because I don't think nobody, don't, don't nobody has, you know, like, really like have this photo. Yes. You know, don't nobody, it hasn't went, you know, like viral or anything. You know what, back in 2010, like 2010, 2012, it wasn't, wasn't really um, popular. So I put it on social media, you know, like Facebook from now, you know, from now and then, you know, everybody scared, like what happened? I was at the Bourbon Orleans Hotel and previous employees, um, up, you know, a chime in like, oh, that's the woman that you say you saw. <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy yeah so that's how i got that's how i find your page oh that's cool yeah i really like how much he loves the city and he has like so many like ties with it i think the reason he got rid of the the mansion was something with money i i don't know but yeah he um um i think yeah went bankrupt or something yeah. like that yeah, felt, you know hard but he'd been i think he fell i think it was back in i forgot what movie it was um my memory served me correctly i think think back in not in 74 when he he shot his first movie and he fell in love with the city oh and that far back was, yeah i think like 74 77 have you visited his tombstone in st louis cemetery number one i no i haven't oh, i haven't okay. passed there and pass it up all you know pass it all the time but i haven't it, you can't go in there anymore i guess because of um people destroying graves and stuff so you can only go through a tour now but uh i liked it it was really hot though because you know i'm from canada mm -hmm. and i can't handle heat but um yeah yeah by the time i got to his grave it was uh like near the end of the tour and i, I just took some like kind of crappy photos of it because <laughs> i was like i need to get uh -huh. out of here it's so hot but yeah, I really yeah. liked. I liked seeing it. It was unique, but I've I heard that he I, like I don't know how he got his tombstone in there. If he if somebody had to move their family vault or what, but I heard that people were not too pleased with him moving in. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't really fit the rest of the cemetery. Yeah. Um. Right. And yeah, um, it doesn't. But you know, it's all who you know. Yeah. And you know, he probably paid some. You know, paid some money. You know, because probably told that you know i'll fix this up i'll do this you know it had a lot of damage to a lot of you know the cemeteries you know like we were doing like hurricane katrina so oh yeah you know, it came in that yeah when i first visited new orleans it was 10 years after katrina and i could still see like certain areas that were damaged like i went to uh the honey island swamp just by slidell and along the way you could still see some damage which it's crazy i mean it was one of the worst that you guys had so yeah the fur the further you go to new orleans east because you had to go that way new orleans east to slide down across the um the um spillway yeah so yeah it's bad so is there anything else that you wanted to add just one um experience that I, um that i remember just been i know it was on the, on the first floor stripping you know stripping the beds doing the houseman thing and the pillow, there was a pillow just sitting on, you know, the pillow was sitting on a chair. And by this time, you know, I'm watching, you know, just watching TV at this time. And and it was as if somebody just flipped the pillow on the floor. And it was a, no way possible that, you know, the pillow was hanging off where it could fall. No way. And it just, I was like, yeah. And by, and by that time, I was used to it. I was used to things happening. So you just paid no mind. <laughs> yeah, I just paid. I was used to things happening. Did yeah. you ever? Did you ever like talk to them or say anything like, "Yeah, I know you're there"? Or yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, oh cool. the well, and also the elevators on the fourth. If you're on the um, like on the the fourth floor, if you're going to like the guest, the guest elevators, it will open up for you. So the girls playing, you know with the elevator also and room 214 we had they had a um a woman who she called down to front desk and said that but and i this was be, this was before that i even seen it i even took this um photo she said that someone a lady in the white dress was sitting at the foot of her bed oh wow 
Yeah, security had to go into the room and everything. They had to explain to you know, explain to freaked out. She she knew it was on. The hotel was on haunted. Maybe she just wasn't a believer. Yeah, freaked out. Oh, you see, know. that's like waking up and there's a ghost on the. I saw an unsolved mysteries episode when I was a child, and it was about a ghost standing on the edge of someone's bed. And ever since then, mm. one of my biggest fears. So I just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel for that lady. That'd be so scary. Um, we also, they also had, I'm on the sixth floor. There was one in the higher, higher room, like six room, 650. I don't know exact room, but I, I know exactly where it's at. Um, Someone called down and said that there was a baby crying in the room next door. And I don't know if somebody was there with, with the child. The, the room wasn't even occupied. <laughs> <laughs> so did you yeah, guys yeah. still go up and check yeah we went up and um check and it wasn't yeah that's scary <laughs> yeah did they ever hear like footsteps and anything or people um people hear um footsteps also um the shower coming on by you know by itself and yeah and you know like kind of like still to this day you said you know i go look on youtube and see people have their experience I'm like wow and, you know and some i, I you know i look at the, uh, their experiences and with their um you know with their experience I'm like okay yeah yeah i believe i believe them oh cool yeah i believe them. i need to go watch some of those videos yeah I watch some of it yeah i also i'm gonna look for those videos of the ghost shows where like the ghost hunters and the one with the english guy <laughs> yeah. and see their episodes when they're in that hotel yeah they, yeah because they came down um to new orleans yeah i remember they came down from new orleans maybe a few maybe like this maybe 2014 2015 oh okay so fairly yeah. recent yeah they came they came down there. i'm not sure if they caught um caught anything I didn't yeah. see. I didn't see that. Ep- I didn't see that episode. I just uh, know because I saw when it was on Bourbon Street. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> mm. So I was checking out your Instagram, and I noticed that your family does your family own a food truck. Yes, snowballs. Oh, New frostbite Island snowballs South. and treats. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you want to let anybody know if they should visit? I think that they should because snowballs are great. <laughs> yes, they can. You know, f- follow us at. Frostbite Snowballs and Treats on Facebook and Instagram. We have the best snowballs here in New Orleans and the softest ice. Different flavors from bubblegum to raspberry. We can make anything. We even have adult beverage snowballs also. <laughs> oh, nice. That I'm going to make sure that I stop by next time in New Orleans. Okay. I have no idea when that will be because, you know, obviously we're suffering from a global pandemic right yeah, now. Yeah, it's pandemic. Hopefully, hopefully things uh, will get better. It'll get better, right. <laughs> have you noticed, like, have you had less customers, I guess, because people are sort of trapped in their house? I'm not really sure what it was like in New uh, Orleans. Well, it's, we're, we're mobile. Oh, okay. We're, we're, yeah, we're mobile, so we um practically, you know, move around. And so we do a lot of um, birthday parties and now we don't like school events we recently did a school event you know that was a um, um, huge success so we're you know it's coming along and see in here in new in, in new orleans in new orleans i have to say this we love to we love to eat so that people is going to come it's going to come out like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes just bring the food and people will come. You know, bring the food, bring the snowballs, you know, now that it's it's crawfish season here. Oh, now. yeah. People love crawfish and the snowball. Seems like a, a very unique mix. I it, kind it of is. hope people eat them like at the same time, <laughs> like one bite of crawfish, <laughs> one bite of snowball. So snowball, it's that's that's how it because, you know, it's spicy. You got that snowball, that cold snowball right there. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's really Mm -hmm. smart. (laughs) Yeah, it's awesome. Um, So is there Mm -hmm. anything, before we go, is there anything else you'd like people to know about New Orleans? Just know it's a a fun, exciting um, city here. Overall, you know, and everybody here, you know, like, is welcome. 
you know, welcome you with open arms and just a, you know, fun place. Best sit down or, you know. Yeah, it is. I'll just tell you real quick. So the f- first t- time I went to New Orleans, after I left, I was already planning my trip to come back. And it's like mm-hmm. a city that I daydream about. And I just can't wait to return. And it's never been like that with any other city in the world that I've been to. So it's such hey, a great place. Right. You know what? I, you know, I hear that. I hear that a lot because we're so like um, rich in, in culture. And there's something every day in New Orleans, you know, like that you can do. Yeah, there you really know, is. Every day of, you can go on it. Like you say, you go on a, on a tour, you can go on a alligator you know like tour you know fishing tour you got the swamp tours every i mean everything you got the boat tours you can you can do it all you got yeah. the jazz it's such a good city oh yes it is i actually played on um i actually i actually played in in the french quarter when i was young trombone oh the jazz band did you yes oh that's so cool okay because i love New Orleans jazz specifically but the trombone is my favorite any sort of horn instrument but the trombone is my favorite uh-huh. and um when I was there I went to the jazz fest and I think there was I think it was the um, preservation hall band preservation hall and they had Pres- kids come up from a local high school and they were playing and their friends were in the audience and they were cheering them on and I was like this is the best thing ever because uh-huh. there's nothing like that here yeah you have uh, you have it here too, you know, like in the city. There, you know, young kids, you know, coming up, twelve, fourteen years old, like in the band right now. Yeah, I yeah, I love it, that. It's mm-hmm. such a cool thing about New Orleans that yeah, it was one of my favorite experiences when I was at the uh, the jazz fest. Well, thank you so much for reaching out to me. It's been a pleasure talking to you and hearing about your experiences. You're welcome. And yeah, let me know if you ever want to come back on. If you have any more ghosty experiences or anything cool. Just let me know. I sure will. I sure will. Well, thank right. you for having me. I appreciate it. If you want to learn more about Travis, you should visit his Instagram, frostbite underscore snowballs and treats. I'll leave his links in the description as well. When you're next in New Orleans, make sure you go get a snowball. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Travis for reaching out to me because I really, really loved hearing about New Orleans, the haunted hotel, and your Nicolas Cage story. Bye.